in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today, what we heard from the Gospel of St. Luke, it was a real story to show us how heaven is captivated with a humble heart. And today we are praying this liturgy, aiming and seeking this humble heart to captivate heaven. The story was telling us that Zacchaeus was a very rich man, but he accepted to humble himself and to climb over the sycamore tree to see the Savior. So he's asking us at the beginning of this reading, what are you going to do to show your humility in seeking the Lord, to captivate the heart of the Savior? So once the Lord saw him, I'm sure there's many around him, and I'm sure also many were climbing trees, but there is one person who was seeking him diligently. So he's encouraging us, the Holy Spirit today, to seek him diligently as the chaos. And the Lord saw his heart and he told him, today I should be in your home. But this is not the end of the story. Yes, the beginning always, humility captivated the heart of God. If you'd like to see it more clearly, go to the cross. The right thief and the left thief, both of them said just one sentence. One of them opened the gates of grace and captivated the heart of Christ, and the other one totally the opposite. The one who saw himself not sinless anymore, if you are the son of God, save yourself and save us. He lost it. He was not able to humble himself even in the weakest point in his life. And he's asking you, I mean, are you able to humble yourself? Are you still stubborn in your mind, in your heart, rejecting to humble yourself before the Lord to gain his love and to be captivated by his love? The other thief was not better than him at all, but he has one sentence as well. He was seeking the true Savior. Told him, remember me, O Lord, if I come into your kingdom. And this opened to him all sorts of grace, and he will be able, he was able to be saved in the last very few minutes or hour in his life. So it's still the same choice. Our humility is the only way to captivate the heart of Christ. But this man has a real repentance because many of us attended maybe retreats or heard sermons or read spiritual books or the Bible, and I was in tears. I need you, O Lord. What are you going to do? Nothing. So the church fathers and even St. Paul in his first epistle to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 23, telling us man is spirit, soul, and body. And the soul is three components, emotions, thoughts, and will. Most of the time, when we read the word of God or we are convicted for any reason, my emotions can work and my mind and my thoughts can work. Then I go home doing the same thing exactly. Why? Because there is no willful act that has been taken place to enable me to be serious in my work with the Lord. This is exactly what the chaos did. He was able to make it as a whole. Yes, he humbled himself first, and the Lord saw him and captivated his heart, and he went into his house. And remember, whenever God is accepting us, Jesus was ashamed that he went into a house of a tax collector, but he accepted the shame up to the cross, and he accepted to die even on the cross for the sake of you and me. Then the Lord didn't tell the chaos at all, what are you going to do to prove your seriousness and your repentance? But because he was seriously seeking him, yes, his mind was telling him, you have to seek this great rabbi, at least at the time, not a savior. And then his mind was working properly. But look to the willful acts which is required from me and you this morning. No one told him, give half of your possessions to the poor and restore four faults to anyone that you have taken money from him falsely. But he did it. 
and look more than that. In the Old Testament, if you have taken something falsely from someone, you have to return it with 20% more. When he is giving four folds, he is giving more than 400% more. Why are you doing this? It's not even in the law, it's more than the law many times. Yes, because I'm repenting seriously. I have a willful act to do it and to decide for it. So the church is encouraging us this morning and the reading today, what is your willful act that you are going to do to make your repentance serious and real for yourself and for people around you? Same thing for the prodigal son. Yes, he came into his senses and maybe he has some tears and his mind told him any hireling person is living a better life than you. Still you are living with the pigs. And then he said, I'm going to see, to, to go to my father and tell him whatever he wants to say. Yes, still he didn't repent. Then he started to walk into his father's house and went in. This is the willful act that God is waiting from you and for me to make your repentance real and serious. Yes, the grace of God knocked at the door of your heart and told you it's time to stop it. It's time to repent. It's time to confess your sins. And I'm still postponing, sometimes for tens of years. The humility that is captivating the heart of God mainly is I'm ready to humble myself before God in the presence of the church. I was talking years ago with a, an elder in the desert, and we were talking about confession. He said something very interesting. He said, those who are not confessing their sins, it's not about confessing or not. It's about the reason behind not confessing. It's again, you reject to humble yourself before God. You reject to be in the status of the chaos or the status of the prodigal son who came to his own senses and admitted before his father that I have sinned. The very famous story <coughs> with the <coughs> famous musicians in the 1960s in Britain. He was very talented and he has the ability to play more than 20 instruments with the same cleverness. And he was a very proudful person, and his, his wife was even worse than him. This is his own words. And, at, and one day, a missionary came to their house, and they started to pray together. Because his wife was very stubborn, very proudful woman. She kneeled down, and she started to admit that she is a sinner, and she is need, in need of the Savior. This guy, his name is John Wimber, did the same exactly, and in his biography he said, I did it because my proudful wife did it. If she was able to humble herself before someone, this one should be a God. That's why he believed in the same day, and their life has been totally converted, and they started a great mission in their work with the Lord. So the Lord is asking us, who is ready to receive this transformation? by humbling myself before the Lord to captivate the heart of heaven and to be able to be united with the Lord and to be able also to offer real repentance. My mind is telling me repent, my emotions are telling me immense repent, and my willful act is always there. Sometimes I say, I did this willful act once, but it didn't work. I can tell you it worked. It worked for a short time. And then you need another willful decision. That's why we need always to be accountable to our spiritual fathers. It's not about I'm throwing or reporting my sins every six months or every three months. It's being accountable, being watchful to my own salvation. Let's pray in the coming few minutes for the Holy Spirit to humble our hearts, our minds, to find out what is the willful act the willful decisions that I need to take this morning to be more serious in my work with the Lord and to be serious in my way of work of repentance. May the glory of Lord Jesus Christ be with you from now and forever and ever. Amen. Amen.